Itinandam, this is Marty Dambara, the Smiling Sanyasi. So today I'm making a video based off a story uh, which kept coming up for me in my beloved guru's, I don't want to call it book because it's so much more than a book, um, titled Living Enlightenment. So my guru, His Holiness Paramahamsa Sri Nityananda, has um, uh, this, let's not even, like I said, let's not call it a book, this uh, goddess, this living energy in the form of a book, um, which contains um, basically all of his teachings um, and everything that he's spoken of so far um, uh, in one place. And the way that we use it in our Sangha is any question that we have, any uh, thought current that we might be stuck with or any guidance that we need. We basically um, hold this book in our hands and hold the question in our inner space and open it to any random page and there will be the perfect answer for you every time. So there was one uh, actually, there were quite a few things that I was stuck with when I was uh, away from this Adinam and away from my Guru. So, uh, and like I said, this particular message kept coming up. So I'll share the essence of what this uh, message is in the hopes that it will guide you also. So in this book, there is um, a story of a sage and this sage walks into a village and the villagers are so happy that they have uh, a man of this caliber with them. So they build him a hut and uh, they basically start coming to him to answer a lot of their questions that they have. So within a short uh, time, in this particular village, an epidemic strikes and all of the birds in the village fall sick and die. And the villagers come and they ask this sage, this is quite uh, unusual, why has this happened? And he has a, a very blanket response of um, basically consoling them, saying it's unfortunate this has happened, but maybe uh, even with this loss, there might be some gain. And the villagers, not necessarily happy or understanding the response, go away anyhow. And then within another few days, uh, something strange again happens in this village where all of the dogs all run away. And again, they're perplexed and they go and they visit this sage and they ask him, why has this happened? It's so inauspicious. And the sage again repeats something similar, that it's unfortunate this has happened, but if you remain prayerful and trust in existence, even in this perceived loss, there may be a gain. And now they're really thinking, okay, this guy, there's something a bit strange about him. You know, ever since his coming here, these unfortunate things have happened. So they start questioning him and whether or not it's actually a good thing having him in the town. And then, uh, so back in this time, they didn't have matchboxes or lighters. When they would start a fire, they would have to basically rub two stones together. So in all of the huts in this village, uh, one morning, all of the fires in all of the huts go out at the same time. And again, they go and they see this sage, and again, he repeats the same message that this is unfortunate, but even in this loss, there may be a gain. And they start thinking, okay, this guy's a little bit crazy or there's something very very strange here so they make a decision that we need to do something about this we need to cook and we need our heat and we need to carry on with life so they make the decision that they're going to the village next door and they'll get some help and they'll uh, basically um, get their fires back in their huts and they'll carry on with life and then this sage advises them not to do this it's not a good idea remain where you are and they obviously feeling that he's some kind of a quack and this is so inauspicious um, decide no they're going and doing what they want to do anyhow and going to this neighboring village so on the way to this village um, they see what looks like a, a huge sandstorm 
in front of them as they're approaching this village. So they hide out of the way to see, observe what's going on. And once the, um, the sand settles down, they see that it's a whole army. And this army has basically just finished annihilating this whole village. So the whole village is demolished, it's attacked, it's in ruins. And now they see that this army is approaching this village. So they're not too far away from their own village. As they start approaching this new village, um, this village where these villagers are from, and they're hiding and they're watching, as they get closer, one of the soldiers remarks that I don't think there's any point in uh, attacking this village. You can't hear the chirping of any bird. There's no barking of any dogs. If you look in the huts, there's not one fire that's lit. It, this will be a complete waste of our time. It doesn't even look like it's inhabited by anyone. So everyone looking and agreeing, they decide to turn around and go away. So the village is shocked and surprised and feeling very grateful and humbled and shaken, go back to their own village and they immediately rush to the sage to um, speak to him about uh, this thing that's transpired and let him know. And lo and, be uh, lo and behold, the sage is gone. He's not there anymore. So the moral of this story, basically the message of this is that Life is an independent intelligence. Our thinking, our logic is not required when it comes to falling in tune and uh, in allowing this uh, beautiful happening to, to just basically uh, happen as it's meant to. Our brain, our thinking, our logic, our suffering, our questioning. Our questioning in God is an in existence in the cosmos, in the superconscious energy, that which makes your heart beat, that which makes you breathe without you having to think about it. it. It's functioning of its own accord. And if we can relax enough, if we can trust enough, if we can be grateful enough in each and every moment for what we have, then it is perfectly capable of taking care of us better than what we are able to do. But it takes a level of trust and it takes a level of uh, relaxing into knowing that there's something much greater which is taking care of everything, including us. So um, it was a timely reminder and a beautiful reminder to keep coming up repeatedly for me while I was there and it's a beautiful reminder um, even while I'm here because it's easy to get trapped in our logic and to start questioning and um, actually funnily enough we had a satsang yesterday where Swamiji was uh, sharing how he himself is going through and he has unfortunately gone through uh, a lot of um, attack and he's still going through a lot there's um a strong anti-hindu um element here especially in india and someone who's standing up so strongly for hinduism and the um preservation and survival of it will be you know in the limelight so even he was saying how uh, he never questions he is a chaste devotee. He knows that whatever is happening is the best that's meant to happen. So, with this construction <laughs> noise going on behind me, I'll wrap it up. And uh, thank you for listening and thank you for tuning in. And I hope that this is a timely message for you as well. So, until next time, thank you and Nithyanandam.